Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this um this video will be talking about microeconomics and the IB microeconomics. And to start the to start the entire topic, first of all I want to talk about what is microeconomics and why should we care about microeconomics. What microeconomic is and essentially why it's different from macroeconomics is because macroeconomic studies the activities of a group of individuals but um, microeconomics studies the activity of one individual so the economic activity or their behaviors of the individual agents it may not have to be one um, individual in some cases but most of the times it will be one group of individuals with the same or same characteristics so we consider them with them as a whole and why should we care about microeconomics at all first of all it's very useful for when you're studying uh, firm behaviors or when, when firms are trying to make the decisions towards their consumers secondly it's also very important for policy making for example for taxation or the um, behaviors people will act after certain policies and lastly it's also because microeconomics is the foundation for macroeconomics a lot of macro policies or macro series are based be upon microeconomics or in other sense that series series that does not base a macro series that does not base on micro series are usually adopted with their legitimacy. Obviously, there's other exceptions. For example, Keynesian economics just does not have micro base at all, and they are proven to work quite well. So, well, economics is a subject that has a lot of debates involved, and we don't yet quite know what we're doing and if we're doing wrong right. Uh, we know what we're doing, but we don't know if we're doing it right or not. So I think that's the charm of the subject that you don't really ever know if you have got the right thing. And after we have a brief idea about microeconomics, I also want to talk about the um, IB syllabus since this is a um, series that series that depends that explains IB economics both higher level and standard level. So, um, according to the IB guideline, there's five topics that it will be covered in the entire IB diploma. Supply and demand, the basis of microeconomics, elasticity, the um, indicators of microeconomics, government intervention, market failure is when the market failed to deliver the efficient allocations and there's act uh, externalities and also the serial the firm and market structures so um firm behaviors in serial the firm there's also going to be a concept to be introduced called game theory which is a very interesting topic i am an econo economic student in university and game theory is what university economics are heavily based on just a side note for anyone trying to apply for universities in your personal statement if you stress the importance of like you understand the importance of game theory you have basis in that i think it might give you some points extra points i don't really know i'm not recruitment but i would if i'm like a lecturer or an interviewer trying to um get students to qualify get qualified students and um there are some key concepts that microeconomics is based on and then you should understand before actually starting to before we actually start to go through that five each of the five points that is there obviously some of those points are standard level and some of the points are higher level and we will be indicating which part depends on de uh, belongs to which group in the title of the videos first concept that you should understand is scarcity the reason that goods are limited goods are rare and why people will pay for them is because there 
or there is an infinite de desire of human to consume or to own things that are met by limited resources. So there's, there, for example, I'm a consumer, and if I could, like this is good A, if I could, I want everything of them. As a matter of fact, I would want more things of her. I would want anything that's, if you imagine this at the set, I want things that are outside the set. I want everything and more. But there is only a limited amount of A, so that's why we have to divide the things between the, the number of A's between different consumers and see how we want to allocate them. So that's, that is the point of economics. Economics studies the allocation of finite resources to the different consumers. So economics studies how resources are allocated to according to needs and wants. According to needs and wants. And there are three main questions that we're trying to answer by studying not only microeconomics, but economics as a whole. So what we want to produce, what good we want to produce, or good of services, how to produce, so the production function, or how the production will carry out, from whom, for whom to produce, so who are the consumers, and how, who are the consumers, and how is this going to be allocated, and how everything will be allocated. So the another key concept that is very important for uh, both microeconomics and macroeconomics is opportunity cost. It is a conceptually difficult idea because you have to not consider the usual way of thinking about cost, but the additional cost to that. In definition, opportunity cost is the cost of choosing to the cost of choosing to uh, choosing not to buy something to buy or consume something to buy consume or produce whichever buy or consume whichever one you want to use to be to, not to produce or buy something in order to buy something else to buy or produce Something else. Something else. Okay. And the reason that we consider that as a cost is because it will allow you to compare options. So, for example, let me show you an example of how to actually have a better understanding of opportunity cost. That if you suppose you solve. Um, can either you have a farm, and you can either farm apple or banana. And or both, or you can do a proportion of both, a fraction of both. So you can do like say if you as an example, you can have five apple trees or five banana trees, or you can have two apple trees and two banana trees. And from those trees, what you can get is uh, some kilos of each fruit. So you can get some kilos of each fruit. For example, you can get five kilos of apple, let's put that axis as apple, and that axis as banana. Have five kilos of apple and two kilos of banana. Say if you plan to plant two apple trees and one banana tree, you can get five um, kilos of apple and two kilos of banana. You can get four kilos of apple and 2.5 kilos of, kilos of banana. And then you can try all these combinations then you will be able to draw a curve like this. We call this the production frontier. 
and this will be something that you'll be examined on as well, production possibility from here. And this will be something that you will be examined on in your exam. Production frontier is essentially a group of productions that you could make with your resources. For example, anything that's here, let me use a highlighter, anything that's in this region that's underneath the curve, anything that's here, for example, they're not desired, they are reachable. So they're feasible. You, can, you will be able to produce that. For example, if your maximum, you can plant 10 trees, you can plant 5-5, five, five, or obviously you can plant 2-2, two, two, that would be a choice. But if you plant two trees, obviously you will not reach the maximum of production you can have. So why that, that is why this point is feasible, but they will not be desirable because you are not doing the best you could. And there will be some inefficiencies involved in this production. For example, uh, maybe you are not using your resources efficiently. For example, you can plant two trees, but you're planting four. That is inefficiency in production. And anything on the curve of the production possibility frontier, they are feasible and desirable. So they are the best choices you could, given the resources you have. Anything outside the production frontier are desirable. You are doing much better than you even possibly could have, but they're unfeasible. So you, if you can, you would want to plant 20 trees and get 100 kilos of everything, but you only can plant 10 trees. That's why you cannot get that production you want. But anything on, on, the, on the production frontier, this line, all the dotted dots on this line are the best you could do with the resource you have. And an opportunity cost is a cost that you incur when you, for example, you are at this production of four apples and two bananas, but you decide you want to increase your production of apple by one kilo. So you're going four to five. Uh, you, you're at four and 2.5, sorry. 4 kilos of apple and 2.5 kilos of banana. You want to go another extra kilo here. But in order to do that, you will move from this point of production to this point of production. Go here. Which means, because this, that is the best you could do, so you go from here, this point, to this point. By doing that, you will have five kilos of apple at the same time your production of banana decreased because you need to plant more apple trees and then by doing that because you only have can plant 10 trees you're planting less banana trees therefore your production of banana decreased by 0.5 kilograms when your production of apple increased by one kilograms so what um what the opportunity cost is exactly that. So here, what you can say is that the opportunity cost, I'll just use abbreviation for that because it's very long, opportunity cost of apple, of one actual kilos of apple, kilo of apple is 0 0.5 kilos of banana. How it makes sense is that in order to play, in order to have an one extra kilos of apple that is here, you are giving up 0 0.5 kilos of banana right here. Obviously, this graph is not too proportioned. So, um, it just shows what it means, but it's not to scale. And this is opportunity cost. It will work the same even if you are buying something. For example, you have 10 pounds, you can either buy a piece of cake or a, a cup of milk. And all of them, both milk and cake cost one, uh, 10 pounds. By buying the cake, you are giving up on the milk. So the opportunity cost of buying the cake is not buying the milk. So the opportunity cost of the cake is milk. 
this is the concept of opportunity cost. And uh, for all the notes that I have, I have here, I will ha upload a more um, clear one, clear notes at the end because my handwriting is horrible. And I will also link PDF down in the description if I could. But I don't know how YouTube works, so we'll see about that. And thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you're the best in the IB exams. And hope you're enjoying economics so far.